Christine Siaco, and I'm from Rowan University with the History of Camden class. I'm Sam Prasad, I'm also from Rowan University with the History of Camden class, and we are interviewing Sue Brennan. Okay. So are you able to tell us a little bit about your upbringing, um, where you grew up, and how your childhood affected you? Yes, uh, I grew up in the Fairview neighborhood, which is, um, I don't know if any of you know, but it's, it's the next neighborhood over from where we currently sit. Okay, the interesting thing about Fairview is it was the first federally funded planned community in the United States. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and it was your um, typical upbringing. When I say that, I mean, um, I was raised in a family of two parents. We were a very close-knit neighborhood. Fairview was, for the most part, its own separate entity from the city. Um, in not only in the design, but in the fact that everybody stayed in Fairview. And the only time I ever went to other parts of the city is when I would get on the bus with my grandmother and go down to Broadway during the holidays. She loved Lip Brothers, and she would take us down to Lip Brothers. And um, my parents would go up there to go to the bank. There was one bank in the city of Camden. It's still there at Broadway and Market, the PNC Bank. Um, and that was the only time we really left Fairview. It was very much um, a close-knit community, and those of us that grew up there still are. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your education and what you majored in and how that um, affected the role that you now play in Camden? Well, I went to Catholic high school. I went to St. Joe's High School here in the city of Camden, and then I cut hair. I decided I want to become a hairdresser, and I cut hair for 10 years. Uh, I then became a mother. I got married and became a mother, and um, during that time, I kept saying to myself, I should probably go back to school because it became more apparent as time went on that you should have a higher education. It should be more than high school education. And when my daughter got to the point that I felt like I should go back to school, that I was able to do so, I did. I went back to Camden County College and took basic classes. Um, during that time is when I began my activism work here in the city of Camden. And through that process, I found out that Rutgers University here in the city had a course that was exactly what it was that I was doing. It was known as Urban Studies. And I decided when I left the county, when I graduated from the county college, that I was going to go to Rutgers University. And that was going to be my major, was Urban Studies. And that is what I did. And I was fortunate enough that um, they gave me a full scholarship. I think part of that reason was because I had a lot of history of the city and um, I was probably what they were looking for in terms of a non-traditional student. And so I was very fortunate again. I was accepted at Rutgers and, and graduated in 2002 with my degree in urban studies. What were your perceptions of Camden before becoming directly involved in revitalization of the city? When I grew up in the city, and when I moved back to the city in 1986 um, with my daughter, who was, she was six years old at the time, the city of Camden um, had undergone, in my opinion, the worst of the times. As you may have heard from some of your previous um, interviewees, in, 19, in the late 1960s, Camden suffered an incredible loss. We lost 40,000 manufacturing jobs in 10 years. That came from a combination of RCA, uh, Campbell Soup, who had its manufacturing plan here, and also the New York Shipyard. The New York Shipyard sits right here in this neighborhood, and a lot of the families in Fairview, their <coughs> fathers worked at one of those three institutions, so it was devastating on our community as well. Um, when you lose that many manufacturing jobs in an industrial city, it's really hard to continue. And so f the city of Camden went through its decay and decline, if that's the right word. A lot of people throw those terms around. Um, Fairview was still pretty much its own entity. When I came back in 1986, I moved back to be closer to my, f my, my parents and my sister lived here. And it wasn't until I began to hear that there was a potential trash incinerator that was going to be built right on the western border of Fairview that I began to get involved in community work. For the most part, I went to school, I raised my daughter, 
and um, there wasn't a whole lot of time to really do anything else. But when the trash incinerator became a real possibility for Camden City, I decided that I would get involved. Okay, so you seem very passionate about the revitalization of Camden. So is it because you grew up here where that passion stems from or where does it come from? It comes from two things. Um, yes, I do have a passion for the city because it is a city that I grew up in. I also have a passion for the city of Camden because as I um, furthered my education and my education and my early career here in the city took me to a lot of urban areas around the country. And one of the things that became very apparent was that our urban cities in the United States have a lot of the same problems, whether it's on the East Coast, it's the West Coast, um, the middle of the country, such as Detroit. We suffer from a lot of um, problems that if left to themselves, just make things worse. So as I watched what was going, in Cam going on in Camden, as it began my community work, it was apparent to me we had a lot of these same problems. And so it was the work that I was doing, uh, coupled with what I was learning at Rutgers University as I began a lot of intensive research and, and different parts of the country that I, I visited, that it was, um, it was very similar to what was going along in a lot of urban areas, and I felt, for the most part, that it was unfair. Uh, your urban cities are given an unfair dose of what nobody wants, and um, it, it just appeared to me as though the very areas, and one thing you'll hear me say, is that everybody's from Camden, they just won't admit it. Their families are all in South Jersey, all from Camden in one way, shape, or form, as to who will tell you that. It depends on where you're at and who you're talking to. Um, but um, I felt the unfairness was really something that I was gonna try to make a difference in. And so that's what brought me to what I was doing and what I continue to do today. Okay. Um, you're the current director of the program offering widespread energy recovery. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that program and how you became involved in it? But to be honest with you, the uh, commercial power program was um, a $5.5 million grant that was given to the city of Camden through the Department of Energy. It was for residential and also through also for commercial upgrades to the buildings. Obviously the city of Camden is, is old and like a lot of the cities we suffer from a lot of um, mechanical um, you know, the performance of our mechanical systems, our heating and our air conditioning systems are um, pretty inadequate in a lot of our older buildings. So as part of the revitalization of the city, the Department of Energy granted the city this money to help with, um, it's really installing new heating and air conditioning units in both residential units and commercial. When um, the merger happened between Greater Camden Partnership and Cooper's Ferry, um, Development Association in 2011, um, I was asked if I would take the commercial portion of the power program and direct it. And that is what I did. And over the course of the next two years, um, we were required by the New Jersey, I'm sorry, by the United States Department of Energy to retrofit 40 businesses in the city of Camden. And I'm very happy to say we more than doubled that expectation. We, um, our actual numbers were at 90, 91 businesses. We actually were able to revitalize. The residential program um, was equally successful. They were supposed to do 160, and I know they did 160. I can't tell you what the exact number was, but it was a very, um, very successful program here in the city of Camden. Okay, so can you elaborate more on what benefits have been seen from the power program? We have businesses in the city that not only um, were able to get new heating and air conditioning systems, which some, a lot of our small businesses could never afford on their own, but as part of that, we sat down and we um, discussed what else we could do to um, partner with that program. And in fact, the Urban Enterprise Zone um, awarded Cooper's Ferry Partnership $1.2 million for a facade restoration program. So the goal here was to get the eligible businesses that um, were willing to um, 
follow the guidelines of the program, not only to get the inside of their building, but also the outside of their building um, retrofitted and upgraded. And um, I have plenty of pictures to show you. I was the director of that program as well. That's coming to an end now. And um, we retrofitted 51, um, excuse me, we had 51 applications for the facade program in the course of the last three years. And I believe we will end with probably 45 of them, some of them being, it's dramatic, it's incredible what from beginning to end. So some of the businesses in the city, the small businesses that for a long time kept saying, well, we never get the benefit of anything, all this money comes in the city, we never see it. Um, we were able to show them that, in fact, you can. You can not only get the inside restored, but the outside as well. So our small businesses were real success stories for the, both of those programs. And um, they're both, commercial power has ended and the facade program will end by the end of the year. Okay. Um, what are some of the actions that you have taken and are currently taking to revitalize Main Street? The Main Street New Jersey program, when 2002, when I graduated from, the, um, from Rutgers University, they asked me if I would take the position as the, the state of New Jersey asked me if I would take the position as executive director of the Fairview Main Street program in the neighborhood where obviously I grew up and where there was a neighborhood revitalization. There was a neighborhood plan that had been um, awarded by the city in partners with um, Wells Fargo. And the Main Street program, it's a statewide program that um, gets benefits. It doesn't get dollars per se, but it, it gets different business benefits to their downtowns. Fairview has a very small downtown. We have a commercial corridor that's about two streets long. One is, is um, actually it's a square. It's known as Yorkshire Square. There's a number of, of businesses that ring the square. And there was um, Collings Road, which is a county road that runs through the, the southern <coughs> half of Fairview. Um, also, those businesses needed help as well. So when the state designates an, a neighborhood plan, if they have a commercial corridor that they feel can benefit from, from Main Street, New Jersey, they will do so. So I was the executive director of the Fairview Main Street program from 2002 to 2008. Um, the state provided a number of benefits, um, conferences, learning, uh, opportunities for the small businesses, how they can, um, you know, how, how not only from marketing, but also how they could um, do, when I say do their paperwork, what I mean is it, it's amazing how sometimes people don't know what a simple budget is. Some of the businesses really suffer because they just never knew. It could have been a mom and dad business that they were just thrown into when they became older, and there was a lot that they could learn. The state of New Jersey did a great job with Fairview, and they were able to provide a lot of benefits to our small businesses. Uh, in 2004, uh, I had to apply for full designation. They had given me full designation on, on an interim basis in 2004. I had to apply for full designation to the state and to the National Main Street Center. Um, I had a business um, a, a neighborhood um, for Broadway. As you know, Broadway sits here, Upper Broadway. A number of the nonprofits came to me and asked me if they could partner with me. Um, rather than compete with me for the designation. And I was able to get them, um, a, a, essentially what it is, it, it's, um, it's not a full designation, but it was a, a partial designation for Broadway. So they were able to access some of those same benefits from 2004 until two, two, 2008. So we got a lot of benefits for the corridors. Um, it seems that re revitali revitalizing the waterfront has been a key idea of past mayors. What do you believe to be some of the strengths and weaknesses of waterfront revitalization? The waterfront revitalization, this is a Sue Brennan opinion, the waterfront revitalization started the overall revitalization in the city of Camden. Um, those that began these efforts back in the, the mid-1980s knew that one of the most popular attractions in any city is the waterfront. So they were very, very smart when they sat down and realized that if they could revitalize our waterfront, eventually it would spread out to other areas of the city, and that is exactly what has happened. It started with the New Jersey State Aquarium, which was then bought out by the Adventure Aquarium, um, the Camden Children's Garden, who Mike Devlin and Valerie Frick are residents, they were residents of Fairview for the last 40 years, they, they began the Camden Children's Garden. Obviously, the Susquehanna Bank Center that's there. Um, there's the River Shark Stadium. So as the riverfront, or the, I'm sorry, the waterfront revitalization began in the city of Camden, it was also uh, necessary to look 
at the other areas. And um, the revitalization of the entire city began on the waterfront. And so I believe that it was absolutely the right thing to do at that time. And I give a lot of credit to Tom Corcoran and to the Cooper's Ferry Development Association who began that effort. So why is Cooper's Ferry Partnership so important to Camden's revitalization? Cooper's Ferry Partnership has done an amazing job partnering with the city of Camden. Um, we've been able to bring um, a whole lot of interest and attention through all of the programs and through the revitalization efforts that have been underway in the city for a number of years. The interest in the city as every successful project is completed and there's another grant awarded and there's another program that is um, awarded to the city of Camden. It's very obvious that the city of Camden has turned the corner. And I say that because I've done this since I was a young mother and people will tell you I was not always nice in what it was that I did. Um, <clears throat> and I was someone who was very passionate about, about the people in the city of Camden and what was being done to us. So as the revitalization has been ongoing and how that the successes have increased, I no longer have to um, have that same um, attitude, so to speak. Now I just sit back and smile because if anyone cannot see what has gone on in the city, anybody who is um, looking at the overall revitalization of Camden and where we've come, especially in the last 10 years, um, it's an amazing restoration to an amazing city. So I'm very happy at what it is I see today. And do you believe that these revitalizations are going to have a positive and long-lasting impact on the community? Yes, absolutely. Um, one of the things that, as a, a resident in the city of Camden, I, like everyone else, believed that when the neighborhoods, um, the neighborhoods, their neighborhood plans needed to be very much residential driven, and as the revitalization of the city increased, the number of neighborhood plans increased as well. As the neighborhood plans got underway and as we move forward that process in the city it became apparent that the residents it needed to be residential driven and it is very much that today the residents are very much a part of the neighborhood plans and I think that is extremely important because I have also been told and have said more than once Camden's been planned to death myself and others have said that everyone used to come in and they planned us and then they left but um, today, it's very much residential driven and those that are in the community are a very active part of the revitalization plan this way when the plan is done and it's in place and the, and the design and the implementation is in place, the residents that are there benefit and, and the stability remains rather than someone moving on. So um, we've learned a lot over the years. The residents um, have also realized that they have to get out and say something. They have to be part of what's going on, and, um, and they are. What is your response to critics who say that the majority of people who live in Camden will not benefit from the new changes and revitalization efforts? I say they're wrong. I say they're wrong because a lot of people that throw stones at the city have never been a part of the city. It's easier to to lash out and say things that A, you may not know what you're saying, or B, you're trying to get some press. Um, but the, revitalization, the revitalization of the city of Camden has been ongoing for a number of years, and it is very clear that everyone is in, when I say we're all, <clears throat> excuse me, we're all moving in the same direction and we're all everybody is together as we do this and so it's very apparent and you can see it in everything that goes on in the city that we're all rowing in the same direction and we're always going to have critics no doubt about it you're always going to have critics um, but again if you cannot see visually um, as well as statistic wise what's <laughs> what's going on in the city then you know i i can't have that conversation with you but yeah, it, it's clear that um, this city is on the move very much so, very much so. 
Uh, the New York Times recently published an article. It discusses how Camden eliminated its police force and replaced it with a new one run by the county. Um, it said this has brought success to the city, but how do you personally feel about this move? And do you, how do you think it has affected crime rates in Camden? They said a couple weeks ago that the, con that the crime has dramatically um, decreased. I'm sure that most of you who have seen the newspaper have seen that the crime has decreased. Um, the presence of the police department and public safety is one of the key issues in any revitalization of any urban area. People have to feel as though if they're going to come into the city, whether it's to live, whether it's to work, um, they have to feel as though they're safe getting there, leaving, living there. And the, um, in the course of the last year, there has been an increase, a large increase in the number of officers on the street in the city of Camden. Visually, you can see that. And the numbers that, um, that they have been, uh, you know, th that have been announced is, is that crime has gone down dramatically. I know that business owners and people that I talk to on a regular basis, people that I worked with through the commercial power program and the facade program, both expressed that they had seen a lot more officers on the street. So there, um, you know, the, the public safety aspect is very important here in the city. Okay, so there was an article written um, last January discussing the flaws of the education system in Camden. And a quote stated that, the fact is that overall there are far too many students coming out of Camden and virtually every other urban center who are neither prepared for college nor career, and that's a crisis. What are your feelings on this statement and what do you think um, should be done? I have to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I'm a big fan of Catholic school. My daughter never went to public school. And um, Camden's education is system is something that's been a hot topic for a long time. It wasn't something that I was ever really involved in. I mean, you know, you know, the facts speak for themselves. I mean, obviously there are issues with the children. I know that there's a lot of quality of life issues that a lot of people just, it's easy for them to say, well, these students aren't prepared and these, you know, these students, um, you know, they have all these different issues. But again, if you really know the city and you've studied a lot of what has gone on here, there's children that haven't slept and haven't had a full meal and don't have a coat on their back when they go to school here in the morning. And um, as a mother and as a grandmother, I can tell you that by the time they get to school, they've, you know, they've done a whole day's work. They, they have a lot of challenges ahead of them. So for people to continue, continually say that the educa education system is flawed, um, to me it's just another case of sometimes it's easier to keep it going instead of admitting that they're making progress. I just don't really know that much about the education system in general because I haven't been in a public school in the system in, in many, many years. And I said my daughter never, never attended public school, so I wasn't really close with the public school system. So, um, you know, as, as far as grades and, you know, and, and the, um, the actual teachings and, and, you know, all of that, the lessons plans and all, I'm really not qualified to speak on it. Yeah. Um, besides money, what's been the biggest obstacle in trying to revitalize and make this city better? Perception. We've, um, one of the things that we've fought for a long, long time is the perception of Camden. Um, I, can, I can give you several different examples. Back in 2009, as I was doing some public art projects here in the city, I decided to do a one-night art gallery what we call a pop-up art gallery um, on Broadway. And most people that I spoke to said, Sue, you're crazy, nobody will ever come. They won't come. It's in the city, it's in the evening. And I preceded it with a Christmas concert at 6th and Washington at Reverend or at, um, Sheila Roberts Park, which sits just two blocks <coughs> behind Broadway. We had a Christmas concert, and then I invited everyone to come up the street to Broadway um, for the One Night Art Gallery. And I had so many people in that building that we had to, at one point, we had to actually stop people from coming in, because obviously it's a fire 
haphazard. You can't have too many people in there. Every <coughs> art gallery, every event that I did in the city, we've gotten more and more and more visitors. We've got more and more attendance. <coughs> and um, a number of people said to me, I would never have come to Camden if my friend wasn't an artist. Um, if you know my, my, my son wasn't the artist, if my mother didn't ask me to bring her here, you know, so a lot of people would have never been to the city and to the event if someone else had not asked them to come. And then when they came, they said, "Wow, if this is not anything that I ever expected, this is you know this is what people talk you know people always talking about the city. I mean, this is amazing. We held a number of them. We had another one at non Night Art Gallery at." Cooper Hospital in the lobby of Cooper Hospital. Um, we had so many people, hundreds and hundreds of people, again, at this, at this art gallery, most of them saying they would never have come had someone not either asked them to come. Once you come to the city and once you see <coughs> what's going on, um, not only do they, and especially today due to the social media that wasn't, wasn't around when I was your age, um, the interest and the attendance uh, in, the, in the city at all these different events just grows more every day. So um, the perception of, oh, it's in Camden, I'm not going, is changing. It is changing. So I do have to say it's the perception. However, we've made an enormous strides and enormous progress with that. And finally, um, what do you wish to see happen in Camden in the next 10 years, and what would you say your ultimate goal is for the city? My ultimate goal <laughs> is to sit back and watch it continue. Um, obviously, I've done this a long time, first as a young mother, and then, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not young anymore. And to see the fruits of our labors is just, it's, it, it just, I can't even tell you, it just makes me so happy because all of the years they told us, you'll never revitalize that city, I always knew that we would. And I knew that it would take not only money, but it would take involvement from the community, it would take involvement from the, the city, state, and local government, and it would take involvement from others that never would get involved in the city that are now involved in the city. Um, the city of Camden is very much on its way back. Um, and the more people that come in and the more that say that to me, it is, um, it's apparent to them as well. And through social media, uh, it's obvious that when we hold different events now, people who again normally would would not come to the city do, and they come to different events. We have a whole host of events in the city that um, we never used to have before, and um, they're so well attended. We we did a Camden Night Garden event this past April. I was the project manager for this Camden Night Garden event. It was on the, it was held on the waterfront, but it was a one night um, festival that um, had come, it was replicated by other festivals were held in different parts of the country. And um, we had thousands, we had 3,000 plus people at this event and we just accepted a national award two weeks ago for this project. And in fact, I was just told last week we got a second award for this event. Um, the awards in the city are coming. Obviously, the businesses, you read the papers, you listen to the news, there's more and more interest and more and more people are relocating to the city of Camden. That wouldn't be the case if they did not see the stability and see the structure and see the long hard work from a whole lot of people, not just me, to make this city what it used to be. And it'll never be what it used to be because it can't be, nor should it be. It'll be the new, the, the new Camden is what it will be. But I can tell you that my goal um, 10 years from now is for people that are from the city, that live in the city, were part of the city, whose family were part of the city, are no longer afraid to say, I'm from Camden. And I think you will see that. I really do think you'll see that. But there's, um, you know, there's so much going right. Is everything perfect? Please don't misunderstand me. Do we have problems still? Absolutely. But things are really 
much more cohesive than they ever used to be, and it's just so important for so many reasons, and the more that the word gets out. Um, you know, th I really do think that there will be the new Camden, and I just hope that I'm around to see it. I, I believe I will be, but you know, working so hard, with so many people for such a long time, it just does me a world of good to see what's happening today. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs>